Spur on live. Okay, so law of attraction and uh, getting into a good feeling state and is that just is that just a perception or does it actually bring in stuff kind of uh, stuff and getting and what's my take on it and I'll talk in general about that okay so um, and these are just my views I mean you know everyone's free to have a different view the um, okay uh, the thing the thing is like one of the things you do with uh, spiritual work, I would say, which is a little bit different from sometimes, the, uh, I'll, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on law of attraction, but uh, I, I have, I think, had a look at, a little bit at it, is a thing of like, am I, you know, the things I want, if I want something, and I always, I always say the thing of like, uh, and it's, it's a bit of a joke, you know, like, uh, it'd be nice to have a red Ferrari, it'd be nice to win the lottery, uh, whatever it is. But who am I who wants that, you know? So does the, the person who wants something, is their experience that they are in a state of separation, requiring something outside of themselves to feel whole? So the idea then is that, uh, so with the different levels with the di different, uh, you know, as Hawkins has done, the different levels of consciousness, you know, that the the experience of the sense of self when there is an inflated ego is the ex the experience of separation. So when there is a very strong sp feeling of separation or lack, this energy of lack, the ego then projects. If I get these external objects, that will make me feel whole. On the you know, so I feel lack. So in my lackness days, I thought, um, you know, I have, a, I have a background of addictions. And I, so I was very much tenacious and, you know, feeling empty on the inside and wanting, thinking if I could get this thing on the outside, then that would be the solution. And I had, you know, I had the thing of like, when I, I mean, food addiction, you know, I used to love all kinds of sugary things, all kinds of savoury things, huge quantities of things, all different types of food I thought would fill that emptiness up. I uh, also thought if I had a thin body, that would somehow fix it. You know, if you're thin and you look good, then that would be the thing that would fix this emptiness. And uh, also thought, it was given to me by a friend, you know, like a glamorous career is in the stock market. If you can get a glamorous career, that's, that's the most glamorous career. It was, uh, I, it was sort of imprinted on my mind. So I did, you know, I was thin for a while and I was fat for a while, I, you know, and uh, I got this, this potential job. And all of these things did, um, they, did uh, they did temporarily fix the hole in the soul. They did temporarily fix the hole in the soul. And now, um, when you do spiritual work, I mean, if you're doing things like The Course in Miracles, you're getting to the core of the sense of a, a separated self. You know, who is the separated self? that needs to get something and visualize something and uh, is going to be okay when they've got lots of money, is going to be okay when they get the perfect mate, is going to be okay when, you know, they're famous and people respect them and get lots of approval. And, you know, those are, they're, they're all different levels of consciousness and there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, of course, at the highest levels, I mean, the world is an illusion. So in the different levels of ego states, I mean, the world that one is, one is perceiving is real to that person in that separated sense of sense. So, you know, they are happy when they get more money or they, get a, they, they, get, uh, they win the lottery or they get a new girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it is. Um, and those things do, you know, they do... Um, so, um, that's the thing. I mean, you know, there is also the thing of, like, doing things and things happening mystically, but there's also a few things. One is, like one's karma you know you, you can't you know like someone might do something might give them something like if you visualize this and feel good you're going to win the lottery and then one person will get the lottery you know they will sort of like okay i'm just going to like feel like i've won the lottery i'm going to visualize the lottery i'm going to affirm I've, I've got i've already got the lottery i'm going to spend like i've got the lottery and the next day you see them and they've won they've got the lottery and said oh well, it works and then you've got another person who's doing it blue until they're blue in the face trying to do the thing 
<laughs> and they're not winning the lottery, you know. And they're going, you know, well, it does work because I saw that person win the lottery and he just visualised it and felt like he won the lottery and he had the lottery. So, I mean, there, there are karmic things, you know. Um, when, you, when you do sort of go into those vibrations, now here's the thing, the funny thing is, like, as you go up the levels of consciousness, as you do spiritual, as you clear your ego out, this feeling of fear and separation, um, the power, uh, the power that one is connected to, the infinite light, if you do hold a thought in the infinite light, that thought is very, very powerful. So when you've got people at very low, uh, at, at, at very high ego densities, they can, they can have thoughts and, and, and things don't tend to happen because they're not, they're not at a very high field of, and they're not a clear channel for that to happen. So as you get to, as you get to the saints, you know, if a saint sends you, just looks at you, you know, your cancer can disappear because they're at that field of total, total infinity. They're like a pure channel to the infinite grace. Um, in, in the Indian literature, they talk about the Siddhis. In the, in the Siddhis, because uh, the, the Indians have been classifying spiritual work, you know, people are levitating, being at two places at the same time. All of these mystical experiences come when the idea of a separated self completely disappears. So those are the huge, you know, so if you hold a thought as a saint, you know, the, the miraculous can happen within a split second. Uh, but, you know, the, the idea of someone in oneness, their ideas of what, what, what would happen when they're no longer in that state of separation, and someone who's in a state of fear and separation, I need more money to pay the bills, oh, if only I had a girlfriend. Uh, and so they pick up a tool to get the, the thing. And they may get that. I'm not saying they won't, you know, there's karmic things. They may suddenly think, the only problem in my life is I need a girlfriend, I need more money. So is there a spiritual tool I can do? Like, can I visualize and feel like I've got a girlfriend? or whatever, and, and mystically attract a girlfriend, and sometimes that can work. And I don't say there's anything wrong with that. But, or, so there's different levels, and there can be different karmic things. Um, I remember I spoke to a lady who was doing the Law of Attraction, and, and you know, she, she said, oh, it sometimes seems to work, and it sometimes is very hard to make it work. And I could get it, I could get what she was saying. So, yes, your perception does change, you know. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, this world is only experienced through identification. So if, you, if there was no identification with time, with the body, with, uh, with, uh, with any, kind of, uh, any, kind of the, any kind of the senses, you know, you'd be off into the infinite light and the infinite realm. So as soon as the ego starts tracking, you start to experience a this and a that. You start to experience, oh, there's a body here, there are bodies there. Um, the time starts to exist. So all of these thoughts, and so you could say that, and then also the experience of a, a me and a you starts to experience as there's more tracking. And also you could say out of the infinite light, you know, that's of course a miracle sort of says, and I think lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles quite, quite says it, you know, if, we're, if they, in truth there is no me and you, and in truth there is only infinite light, and all of this world is an illusion, you know, the Course, in lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, it says, some of this is our collective illusion, our collective sense of separation. Some of this is the personal sense of separation, which has been projected out. So you could say we're all like uh, in separation, we're all little projectors, and we share some of the collective separated ideas which we all share in, I don't know, like the economy or, or what's going on with politics. And we also have our individual things which are part of our perception that we do. But within the collective, you know, uh, things can come and go within that collective dynamic. So, uh, and I, you know, there's no, for me, there's no judgment in where you are. And, and if you want to add a certain thing, you know, do that. But for me, you know, for my own thing, I think, you know, like the 12 steps I quite like, uh, of course in miracles I quite like, because it's not so much of, let's give the ego I'm not anything against that. I mean, that's fine. You know, let's give the ego something to do so it can get the things it wants. And I, and I don't think there's anything, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, when you're doing deeper spiritual work, you're trying to let go, to experience who you really are and experience a, a source. Um, you know, like some of you have experienced, like when you're in separation, it's like, well, if you could win the lottery, life would be a lot better. Um, 
but also when you get into the mystical states, like all of you have been in mystical states where, where there's hardly any thinking and there's flow and everything just happens spontaneously. If food is required, food just miraculously happens in the now. If, um, if money is required, somehow it comes through. But there's no person there worrying about the next moment. So those are the, like the, the mystical states. Now, if you try to explain that for someone who's like struggling to pay their rent and is feeling lonely because they haven't got a partner, that sounds quite, you know, and actually, you know, maybe the law of attraction is right. Because at each, each point in the journey, different tools are given to where you're at, you know. So it's like it's fine. Every, every, every tool. I mean, I think, um, so, I mean, if you want to have a debate on is it perception or is it true? I mean, with it, I mean, you could say there's a collective illusion and collective things are manifesting within that collective illusion on a level. So, you know, so that's uh, also, okay. Um, so that's, that's how I see it, you know, with, uh, with that. Yeah, yeah. Should I put it off or do you want to say anything? Um, have I got a question? The question, I guess, is like, um, is there a line between a sense of lack and a need for, and it's not the best word to use, but it's the only one I can think of, is a need for survival. So somebody could say, oh, I'm going to try and manifest a Ferrari or a lottery mm -hmm. win, mm -hmm. is entirely different to somebody who's like, I can't afford to pay the rent this week. And can't afford to pay the rent this week is a very, is, doesn't feel, although there's an, elef ele an element of ego attached to that, it seems to be more related to the pain body, Eckhart Tolle's mm -hmm. pain body, than it is towards this, I'm going to be a millionaire and I want to be on stage and I want to have an audience there and all these adoring fans. What I... It's... I guess... And what, what's actually... And as a non-Christian, the, the Jesus' quote about ye of little faith is just coming into my mind right now, is that to get out of that sense of lack when you're living in very, very real lack. Um, is there a trick to it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not, because right now I'm not actually living in lack. I'm, I've kind of had sort of work, I've got some pieces going on. But I'm aware of periods in my life where I have been. And when I'm in that state, whether it's through a relationship disaster or I'm in lack because I haven't got a relationship or it's lack because I'm in the wrong relationship or it's a lack because I haven't got any work or I can't pay the bills or I think I'm... All these different periods of worry, it's... At that point, you know the importance to surrender. Mm. And at that point, it's also the hardest to surrender because you're really feeling like you have to work it out. And is there a way, a trick, to <laughs> fast track that process when somebody really is in lack and they need, a they need a change in their reality for their survival, but they're too much in their own head to be able to connect spiritually? I I'm not sure if I'm really no, making sense. I think it makes sense. I mean, I think it, it is the thing in, in spiritual work. Mm. Of the, it's a, uh, uh, here's, an, here's an example. It's like most people, when they're happy, Yes. will eat more healthily and when they're when they're um and when they're stressed and they're running around which is the time they would really benefit from eating healthy they're going for the coffees and the fast food because they haven't got time to eat properly and so it starts a snowball effect it it, 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 it set, sets momentum for a bad diet and therefore low energy and therefore more stress and so in a similar vein that time you really need to connect spiritually that time you really need to surrender let go and trust in the process because you're so busy trying to figure it out and you're in your head and you're trying to survive, it's the hardest time to connect. And, and I guess my question there is a little bit along those lines. It's like, when you find it the hardest to connect, is there a way to fast track through that? Well, I can share my experience, okay. I can share my experience around what I do. I think each person, um, at wherever they're at, will use whatever they know to use. But what I use, and, and there are times when... Um, if, if, I'm, if I have some kind of emotional shock or something big happens and I feel disconnected, I feel in fear and in, uh, in, fear and in the thinking, then the thing I, I do, and I was really, really helped by my teacher, Dr. Hawkins, is that um, 
you know, if I'm at a low level of consciousness in the fear and in, in the thinking, then A, it's like I'm tuned into a radio station. You know, it's like I'm tuning into, you know, radio fear. And I'm picking up from the collective all these fear-based ideas. So the thing I got was that while I'm in the fear, I would pick up from, if you like, I'm simplifying it, radio fear, some tractor field of fear. I'm picking up from the collective, all I can radio tune Brexit. into. Pardon? Radio Brexit. Radio Brexit, okay. <laughs> radio fear, I'm picking up, all I can tune in, I'm on a, on a radio frequency where I'm picking up from the collective, just radio junk, basically. So all my thinking at that point, I just take up, well, it's useless because I'm, I'm now connecting, I'm in the fear. I'm now picking up for thoughts which are coming in on radio fear. So I have to tune in, you know, to, to, to radio peace, to radio abundance, to radio silence, to radio prosperity, to radio lack of no fear. So that was really, really helpful. And then I thought, okay, and I have this very, very strong, I'll share it. It's like, when I'm in fear, forget your thinking. It's like, my thinking, I'm not going to try and work out problems when I'm in fear. Because as my, as my vibration increases, as I clear the fear, when we do lots of things, Course in Miracles, Feel the Feelings, The Observer, all those things to clear the fear, then I'm tuning into another attractive field. I'm tuning into a higher radio station, which will have much more, um, much more useful thoughts, shall we say, or ideas to solve the problem. Now, the thing I do, this, so what do I do? If, I'm in, if a lot of fear comes up suddenly, I'll say, don't bother with your thinking, because all your thinking is not going to come up with a solution. You're on radio fear. All your thoughts are meaningless. Don't even try and use your, your thoughts to work out a problem. If, if, there is a, if there's something I have to make decisions on, or whatever it is, which is critical, I will delay until the last possible second to make a choice and clear out. So hopefully that which arrives to make the choice or have the conversation is at the highest possible vibration. Because I don't want to, you know, if I have to have a, an important conversation or a business thing or whatever it is, or an interview, while I'm holding on to that crap, I, in my experience is it will go badly. That's just my experience. And when I'm in the infinite now, you know, things go miraculously. And then I can be anywhere in between. And, and, but, you know, I just don't want to be at the low state. So the thing I do is I, you know, is to listen to people who I think have the highest possible vibration. Because I, you know, so I can lean on their energy and their words at the highest possible vibration to tune me in. You know, like on Audible, there's uh, Dr. Hawkins audios, or there's videos. But I mean, he's my teacher, I mean, you might have your whatever it is. But for me, it's like, well, he's at, uh, he's, in my view, he's, uh, he's one of the highest teachers out there, even though he's passing body. So I'll, I just listen to him, and I can feel, I've, I've, I've had this actually, things have been stuck, and I listen to him for a period of time, and then like all kinds of miracles will start to happen, as, I, as, as and, and you can see that the vibrating, it's even like people will call, people will text, all kinds of things, I see the miracles are happening because I'm now tuning into his voice, yeah. Do you not find though that when you're in that, and I, and I, and I say you collectively or personally, yeah. and it is more, it's, do you not find though that when you're in those low energy states and you hear somebody who's high energy, you just think, oh God, take this shit away from that part. <laughs> really not in the mood for your positive bloody thinking, you know? It's, it can, I think sometimes it's more, rather than reaching for the highest vibration, it's reaching to a little bit of a higher match than going straight for God. <laughs> I, think, I think that would be the case for others, but for yeah. myself, I mean, yes, you know, for myself, I'll, I'll, I usually choose middle vibrations if I'm feeling quite good. Uh, but if I'm in extreme pain and I'm totally blown out and I need a miracle, then it's like... It's, I think sometimes it's easier. For, if I was, for example, it's like, I'm not really a lover of horror films. Yes. But if, I, if, if I'm in a really bad space and I'm pissed off with the whole world, I'm angry at everybody, I'm not going to get much from listening to Louise Hay. I'm just going to want to throw the book out the window or the whatever I'm reading it on. It's just going to annoy me. And therefore, going and watching a horror film, while I'm not a big fan of horror films, and it's hardly high vibrational stuff, at least it'll take me out of myself a bit. That one little step beyond feeling in my own head. That that's that's it might not be the best example, but that's what I think. I mean. I think, well, you know, everyone does what, what, what they're yeah. going to do. I mean, I think, uh, for me, um, 
I, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, horror films are now longer, longer. No, I'm I mean, sure it's just, my, it was an list. example that just came out of the top. But, of my but head. yeah, no, I can, I can distract. Black with, comedy, I, I can distract with something, uh, and um, I think you know if that's appropriate to the context. I mean, if I'm in yeah. real pain though, and I need a miracle, I'll put on the highest teacher I can because I'm in pain. Yeah. So I, that will go through the resistance of my ego saying, like, let's have fun or, or something. Yeah. Or, or but yeah, distract. see, in my own experience, while I've listened to and read a lot of spiritual work, when I am down in energy, and I'm using this reflectively now, looking at periods in the past, the last thing I want to do is hear somebody uplifting because I just think they're annoying. Like, oh, yeah, it's all right. That's just my own... Um, because what happens with me in a low energy state, I become very cynical. Yes. And I become like, I turn into a disbeliever. I lose my faith. And so, therefore, it's like I just have to get off the subject completely and, and just not look for a solution and go and watch TV or stroke a cat or something, you know, something different. It's the ego is pulling you yeah. away from the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good point. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Good. Okay. Okay, so uh, has someone else got a question? Yes.